then the range of punishment will be 25 years to 99 years or life with a possible fine up to $10,000. Did you understand? I don't owe you any fidelity while you're in prison. A traumatized family, a frustrated county commissioner. New video into our newsroom shows a frightening ordeal. An armed man with a violent criminal history is seen trying to get into a far north side home. Only children were inside at the time. That man was wanted for violating his parole, and he later threatened his parents at gunpoint, according to court documents. Was the worst feeling in the world. Lisa Sin vividly remembers the day she received a ring alert on her phone. I saw that he was in the side in the back of our yard, and then I knew that something was wrong. It happened nearly two weeks ago. Cameras show a man walking to her front door, gun in hand. Lisa wasn't home, but her three kids, including a teenager, were. Alerted my kids. I said, don't answer the door. And I'm like, stay away from the windows. Lisa says the children barricaded themselves in a closet while she frantically called for help. Armed neighbors showed up, Lisa says, and drove the man out of the gated community. But he returned. Court documents state Christopher Rodriguez went to his parents' home and threatened to, quote, shoot up the house if they didn't let him in. He was arrested. Records show the 34-year-old's criminal history dates back more than 15 years. Recent charges include sexual assault and endangering a child. Officials tell us Rodriguez was wanted for violating his parole. The system's broken. I mean, we're, we're talking about this incident here right now, but, you know, over the last few weeks, we've seen five, six officer-involved shootings and those individuals have long rap sheets. County Commissioner Grant Moody says it's not about pointing fingers. You know, we need to move faster. Lisa still struggles with the what ifs. It's just hard to live in fear, even though we're trying not to live in fear. Uh, the next person is going to be Christopher Rodriguez. Uh, Diana, this is two cases. Uh, court is calling, excuse me. 2023 CR 1149, 2023 CR 11150, State of Texas versus Christopher Adam Rodriguez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Allie Jackson. Defense. Shannon Mark for Christopher Rodriguez. And are you Mr. Rodriguez? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have you received all the discovery in each cause number and reviewed that discovery with your client? I have. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Are there any applications? No applications, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, in each of the cause numbers, I'm showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment in each cause number? We do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented in each cause number? No, Your Honor. We're giving count two in each indictment and proceeding on count one and the habitual enhancements. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Rodriguez, in each of the cause numbers, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review those documents with your attorney? Did you understand them? Yes. In each cause number, you're charged with unlawfully carrying a weapon with a felony conviction. Uh, normally, the range of punishment for that offense is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine. If the state is able to prove up the uh, habitual allegation, then the range of punishment will be 25 years to 99 years or life with a possible fine up to $10,000. Did you understand? If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Did you understand by entering this plea you were giving up those rights? And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in each of these cause numbers? Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? He has. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? He does. Do you believe he's currently confident and was legally sane at the time of the offense? He, he was. He is. Mr. Rodriguez, has anyone threatened you, forced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Are you a U.S. citizen? Court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. And each cause number, I'm showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand? Uh, yes, we did. All right. According to the plea bargain agreement, state is proceeding on count one in each cause number. 
punishment is to be assessed at 50 years in the prison. There are no applications. The cases will run concurrently. State will take in consideration 2023 CR 10985 and 2023 CR 10984. Did you understand that to be the plea? There's actually one additional one, Your Honor. Yes. 2023 CR 11151. 11151? Yes, Judge. Any objection to the court writing that in as a part of the plea bargain agreement, counsel? No objection, Your Honor. All right, and then the court will take in, I mean, then the agreement is also to take in consideration 2023 CR 11151. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review those paragraphs with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am, I did. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have involved, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Counselor, there been any such motions? There have not been. And each of the cause numbers outside the plea bargain agreement, the state is re requesting no contact with the complainants. Did you understand that was a recommendation from the state and the court does not have to follow that recommendation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then, and cause number 2023, CR 11149. How do you plead to count one? No contest into the enhancement allegations. How do you plead, true or not true? True. And the cause number ended in 2023 CR11150 to count two, how do you plead? No contest. And to the enhancement, how do you plead? True. State, any evidence to support the defendants, please? Yes, Your Honor, and each cause number the state would offer states exhibit one with all attachments. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Mr. Rodriguez, in each cause number, I'm showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review those documents with your attorney? Did you understand them? Did you sign them in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am, I did. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements, police reports, and judgments, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? All right. In each of the documents, I see um, the information is signed by Kim Gonzalez as opposed to Mr. Locke. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez is an associate attorney. I've been representing Mr. Rodriguez this entire time in concert with Ms. Gonzalez. Uh, and Mr. Rodriguez consents to that arrangement. All right. So, Mr. Rodriguez, do you need Mr. Locke to go over these documents with you? Or did um, Ms. Gonzalez, who's an associate, associate in his firm, go over those with you? And that's to your satisfaction. That's my satisfaction. All right. Thank you. In each cause number, the court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments. And the court will review the same. All right, if we can go off the record for a moment, if you can mute us, please. Attorneys. All right. Any objection to the addition of a judgment and the waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations in cause number 2023-CR11150? No objection, Your Honor. Yes, Judge, at some point, while you're clear, can you give indication of the people who sit in the no contact? I can All right. Thank you. And then in the cause number 2023-CR-11149, uh, the judgment 2020-CR-1650. Uh, it's what's in the... You have it? No, it's not in there. Yeah. It's in the other one, though. No, that's that. it happens. No, that's a different one. But that judgment is in the 111501. Does it have to be a dating judge? It does? Oh, did I miss it? Thank you. I'm turning so quickly. You had me doubting myself. No. <laughs>
Oh no, off the record for a moment. All right, any objection to the amendment, amendment to the waiver of consent to stipulations and testimony and stipulations in 2023? No, no objection, Your Honor. Yeah, so, so that, much paperwork. I've been there. I was trying to sort them out. <laughs> All right. In each cause, sorry. In each cause number based upon states exhibits one in attachments and your plea are true, the court will find the enhancement true. And the court will find um, you guilty of count one in each cause number. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Uh, anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? O only this, Your Honor. There's a uh, outside of the agreement, the no contact. Uh, there's a young lady by the name of Cassandra in the no contact. That is Mr. Rodriguez's daughter. Uh, Chris loves his daughter very much, and he would like to have contact with her. Uh, he understands he will no longer have contact with her mom, uh, but his parents who are here uh, sometimes act as a conduit between the, the two of them, uh, Chris and his daughter. And, and certainly Chris does not want his daughter to ever think uh, that he doesn't want to have contact with her or that he would agree to such a thing. Uh, so uh, he, he does love her very much. He wants to uh, be able to do things like send birthday cards to her, maybe through his mom, uh, and keep in touch as best he can uh, under the circumstances that he's going to be under, which are him being in TDC and his daughter being in a different state uh, under the custody of her mom, uh, who will not have contact with Mr. Rodriguez. So what we're asking for, Judge, is the very limited uh, contact that might occur where Chris would send a birthday card to his mom, his mom would relay that to uh, his daughter, uh, that sort of thing, just so that Chris uh, can can have uh, make sure that she knows that that, that he certainly uh, loves her very much and, and wants to be there for her, but obviously can't because of the circumstances of the sentence. State. Yes, Your Honor. Um, in the case that was one of the cases that was taken into consideration, the sexual assault, one of the counts in there was endangering the child was present during the alleged assault. Um, it actually happened with her on the bed. She is under the age of four. And so at this time, we do not feel contact is appropriate, Your Honor. All right. And that was? That was Cassandra. And then an alleged sexual assault. It was against... sexual assault against her mother. And mm -hmm. then uh, one of the other counts in the indictment was for endangering a child. And, and just for the court's edification, Your Honor, there's a lifetime protective order against uh, for Mr. Rodriguez, not for Mr. Rodriguez, but where he is. I think the court understands she is the protected person. He is the he is the, the excluded person. That's a lifetime protective order with the mom. But but he did ask, uh, and and the state agreed, under those civil circumstances that he could have contact with with, her, with his daughter. All right. Is there anything you wish to say? I mean, it's just that I have a protective order in place with the mother of my children, Allison Harris. That's for life. I understand that and completely fine with abiding by that. I just don't see why I need to not be able to have contact with my daughter. All right. So I've read the police reports, right? So I'm assuming that you love your daughter. Am I right in assuming that? And you would never want to do anything to hurt her. Hurting her mom is causing her emotional damage. Do you understand that? And I don't know why when people go to prison, they expect for people to wait for them. Like nobody is obligated to wait for people when they go to prison. I mean, it's not like, a, you know, the movies where somebody's coming to see you every day at the prison and just waiting at the prison to pick you up and I'm going to be faithful to you. That rarely happens. There are consequences when people make choices. Sometimes the consequence is you go to prison and nobody's waiting for you. It's like, yeah, I'm done. Maybe if you get out and you start acting like an upstanding citizens, we can get back together. But guess what? I don't owe you any fidelity while you're in prison. So all of this started over the fact 
that you thought that she wasn't being faithful to you while you were in prison? And how long were you gone in prison? So that's not man. Mm -hmm. uh, two years and nine, 10 months. All right. So why do people think that somebody should wait for them for two years? That's two years. And then when people are out of prison, usually they're not faithful, but they want somebody to be faithful for them in prison because technically they have to be faithful because there are no girls in, in here at the male prison unless they're guards. Right. And then we want people to be faithful because we got to be faithful. So here's the thing. She can contact you if she chooses to contact you when she's of age. Right now, I'm not going to order contact. So as previously stated in each case, I'm finding you guilty. I'm finding the enhancement true. Court is going to sentence you to 50 years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. Cases will run concurrently. Take in consideration 2023 CR 10985, uh, 2023 CR. This one's not that. 2023 uh, CR 10984 and 2023 CR 1151. Let me change that in here because it's not written correctly. There should be no contact with Allison Harris and no contact with Cassandra Rodriguez. Did you review the document entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yeah. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because these are felony convictions, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, All right, we can go off the record. Mr. Rodriguez, I realize this is a lot of time. How old are you? 34, man. All right, you're 34. Here's the thing about having contact with children. At some point, she's going to grow up. Maybe you will get out of prison. You've learned something. You've gotten your life in order. And there's always room that people may have for forgiveness, right? But if you are not doing the right things, then people may not have forgiveness for you. So whether or not she forgives you and ultimately wants to have contact with her father, that'll be completely up to her. But you have to make the step first step by doing what's right. You understand? All right. Good luck to you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.